I want to point out that these are algebraic fractions. So first, you've got to know how to deal with them as fractions and then work out the algebra later. Okay? Now, we're dividing these two fractions together. That's quite different to subtracting. If I gave you, as an example, 3 quarters divided by 2 fifths. I gave you a pair of fractions, no algebra. What would you do with those? Would you do the reciprocal of 2 over 5. Very good. I can take the reciprocal of that, flip it upside down, and that would have the effect of changing division into multiplication. So that's what you're going to do. Okay. Now I'm going to do much the same thing here. However, when you have a look at questions like this, we know it's better to start like looking at common factors and cancelling things out rather than just multiplying through because the numbers quickly get quite large. And if I can avoid big numbers, then that will hurt my brain less. All the more so when I look at this. There's so much algebra here that even when I take this suggestion, which I'd love you to write with me, I am going to leave the first fraction intact. I'm going to transform the division into multiplication, which means that the second fraction is now the reciprocal. I do not want to just multiply the numerators and then multiply the denominators. Look at the numerators, for example. Do you remember when you get given a binomial like, say, this? When you expand, this term, sorry, this binomial has two terms, this binomial has two terms, so your answer is going to have 2 times 2, 4 terms. If I looked at these numerators, how many terms are there here? It's a 3, which we would call a trinomial. There's another 3 over here. How many terms will there be when you multiply those together? 3 times 3 is 9. Now, a lot of them will cancel. Uh, or collect, but I don't want to even go there. So instead, have a look at the first example we did today. What strategy can help me before I start combining? I'm going to factorize. Let's have a go. Up the top here, x squared plus 5h plus 6. What pair of numbers can we think of? 6 and 1 would be, would be what we used if one of these were a negative, but it's all positive right now. Yeah. So 6 plus 1 ain't going to give me 5. Instead, I'll go with 2 and 3. So I've got h plus 2, h plus 3. Yeah? Denominator. Pair of numbers. Adds to 4. Multiplies to 3. 3 and 1. Immediately, you can see the advantage of going to factorization first. I haven't even finished the question, and I've already got some things that will eliminate each other. I'll get to the elimination in a minute. Let's look at this other fraction h squared minus 2h minus 3. Pair of numbers. Minus three. 1 and negative 3. They'll add up to this, won't they? And they'll also add up to this. So h plus 1, h minus 3. Last one. This is actually quite nice. You don't even have to think of a pair of numbers. All you have to do is take out the common factor, which in this case is h. Okay, now we're ready to go. I advise you pick another colour up to do this step, just so you don't mess this up really badly. In the first fraction, I can already see h plus 3 and h plus 3. So they're gone. If I look across fractions, you actually can see this h plus 2 will cancel with this h plus 2. Do you see that? h plus 2 and h plus 2, they're going to be gone. Anything else? The h plus 1 down here, the h plus 1 up there. Okay. Now the key thing that you need to remember when you're doing this is you're cancelling thing, cancel, cancelling things from the top and bottom. Cancelling. That's special cancelling. Uh, you can't cancel if, for instance, there was an h plus 1 here and an h plus 1 down the bottom. On the denominators, you don't want to cancel that way. You want one on the top, one on the bottom. Next line. What's left of the numerator? That's it. That's, that's all that's left. On the denominator, H. and now you're done. That's, that's it, isn't it? Ah, that's a great question. Can I cancel the H? Okay, now pause for a minute. If I give you something like this, uh, call that. Now, don't shout out an answer. 
Just think about what this is equal to. Now watch what happens if I cancel the fours. Uh, that didn't work. Why didn't it work? This is not the two. What is it, by the way? It's, it's one quarter, because that's one, that's four. So well, what went wrong? Why can't I just cancel the fours? Say that again. Subtraction. This subtraction, that's the problem. But why is it a problem? Why can't I mean I did loads of cancelling over here? Why can't I cancel here? Because if you cancel, say it again louder, I guess. Everything. If I want to cancel this four down the bottom, it's got to go through everything at the top. You can't just pick and choose. So in fact, you can cancel the four if you want, but this is not what it looks like. It doesn't look like this. It looks like this. You see that? You cancel it here, 4 over 4 is 1, or 3 over 4 is 3 over 4. And that, indeed, is a quarter. Okay? So when you look over here, like I've just changed from numbers, the 4, to an H. Algebra obeys all the same laws that numbers do, because algebra is just pro numerals, right? Can you cancel the H answer? Well, no, because there isn't an H here. If you wanted to, sometimes there are advantages to this, but in this case there is not. I could do this. H over H is 1. But then you have to add 3 over H. Is that better? No. no. I, know, I don't think so. I think it's the same as that. Okay? So I'm just going to leave it at that line, and you're finished. Okay? So just to review, when you have a look at something like this, remember, it's just like fractions, normal fractions, division, take the reciprocal, turn it to multiplication. But secondly, Look for factors. Once you find factors, things just cancel like crazy and you'll end up with something very nice and simple. Okay?